Welcome to the Adore Knits podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai on uh, Instagram and Ravelry and Adore Knits Steph on Instagram. I am also a yarnologist. This was one of my purchases. I bought my mom a Christmas present t-shirt about sewing and they had this, so I bought it. And even though uh, mustard is not the greatest color ever on me, this makes a nice buffer. Um, so, <laughs> so before I start talking about everything, let me tell you what I have in store for you today. So we're going to have a happy new year. <laughs> Welcome to 2020. It is January 2nd. I'm going to do a throwback project. I'm going to talk a little bit about the yarn wall. I'm going to review 20. 19 going to talk about goals for 2020. I'm going to show you whips and more socks than you ever would want to see. I, I've been sock crazy. Um, I do have a finished object. There is a little shop update and I have the December Adornet prize drawing. So I think that's it. If you like the episode, subscribe, follow, <laughs> <laughs> and hit the like button. It always helps. And do the little bell so you get notified. Okay, there. I said everything that I am responsible for saying. <laughs> now, let's get to the good part. Okay, so Happy New Year. Yes, throwback. Okay, what I'm wearing is, I had to write it down, is the Phi by Jennifer Dessau. It is Into the World. Captain Tight Pants colorway paired with Leading Men Fiber Arts. And this has to be one of the longest shawls I've ever knit. So the uh, beloved teal color is the Leading Men Fiber Arts. And then the variegated portion is Captain Tight Pants, which is, of course, a reference to all of our favorites, Serenity. No, not Serenity. Firefly. Serenity was the Firefly ship. Serenity was also the movie that I didn't really love. So that was a Joss, Joss Wheaton production. <laughs> so there it is. It's doing a good job breaking up the mustard next to my skin. So, but it was funny. I did my top nine, top nine of nine of 2019. Yeah. So that app and, uh, my most liked photo was me with that mustard colored, uh, fallen cloud shawl. So I don't know. It, it was a good, good pairing that day. So, um, there's that. <laughs> That's my throwback. So I don't wear it often. It is really long. I should wear it as a, uh, scarf with my coat. It reminds me of the spring cleaning shawl. I remember it being a simple knit. I want to say I knit it in about 2015. That's my guess. And yeah, it's great. Good color choices. So that's that. Um, 2019. So how was your 2019? Mine was knit-tastic. So on average, the last two years, because you know I'm a numbers junkie, right? Um, on average for 18 and 17, the way I have them sorted in my, um, on my Ravelry page, they're joined up. So I have to give you an average. I knit uh, 10,600 yards over 34 projects. So this year... I knit 35 projects, so that's in line, but I got 12,900 yards, so that's great. As someone who has a rather large stash, it's great to feel like, okay, I got some things out. Would you like to know how many of things I knit? I, I gotta share, I'm so excited. <laughs> I knit 14 pairs of socks, seven hats, my goal had been 10, so that was a little short. I knit three sweaters plus one baby sweater. A baby sweater doesn't count as a real sweater to me. However, a uh, boy's size five does. <laughs> um, I knit three cowls because I do generally prefer cowls to uh, shawls. Can I tell you that I've been really cold this winter, like to the point where I've said to Steve a couple times, Steve's my husband, um, I don't need to live in New Hampshire anymore. <laughs> Let's move south. It's just, I think the lower... Um, lower body fat. I'm just cold all the time. So I got one of the compression shirts from Under Armour that the boys wear that I got for them for soccer. Super warm and cozy. So I got a black and white from Dick's Sporting Goods and I'm going to wear them all winter. So get used to seeing these because it's very nice, especially this adds warmth too. But so anyways, okay. 
uh, three sweaters, three cowls, two shawls, two mittens, one toy, one baby blanket, one pair of leg warmers. So that's it. <laughs> Those were my projects for 2019. I finished the bling your string um, bingo. I'm going to do it again for 2020. I got one column <laughs> of my bingo card completed, which, hey, great. And uh, I was happy with the goals I finished. The goals I did not finish, I'm carrying over to my 2020 card. So I can talk about those now. Should we talk about 2020? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to try to knit three sweaters again. That's one of them. I'm going to knit Christmas socks for three of my family members. It could include me. I'm part of my family. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, so I did the Fiber Knit Advent calendar and December just fell apart on me. And so I think I made it to day three or four and then I set it aside. So I'm going to knit the 25 days. So I guess that's 22 21 remaining into my hexagon blanket. That's one of my goals. I'm going to complete all 12 months of the Desert Vista Dye Works um, sock knit along. I started in February, so I, I got 11 finished last year. So um, I'm starting on time this year. I'm going to knit a gift. That's a pretty easy one. I'm going to do a scrappy project. So I've got yarn scraps and the blankets are like never ending scrappy projects. I want to do something small and fast or smaller. Um, I So Down Cellar Studios is changing her format the way she runs her knit alongs this year. So a couple of these will fit into her knit alongs. That was kind of my goal, like include Desert Vista, include the, the Stash Dash 5K. Again, I want to complete that. Um, but I also want to make pattern, make a pattern for my favorites, make a pattern that was queued before this year, 2020, knit five Rhinebeck purchases. I don't care what year they were purchased from Rhinebeck, just knit five Rhinebeck purchases. I think that would be nice because usually Rhinebeck, I purchased single skeins of variegated yarn. In the past I have, I've done much better this year or this past year I bought sweater quantities. <laughs> Good and bad, right? Depending if you're growing your stash or trying to um, meet sweater goals, but, um, and then I have knit three baby gift sets. So that was also my December goal and I got none of them done. <laughs> and I just heard from Steve this morning that Raul and his wife are at the hospital. So an unknown baby will be joining us soon and we will know. We will know. I have a blue Anders newborn size sweater that I knit. Um, it's blue and it has the trees across the hem. Remember I went crazy with those. I knit like four, four or five. One for each of my boys, one for Suzanne's son, that blue one. So at least four. Um, great pattern. Absolutely love it. But um, yeah, so if it's a boy, I'm giving him that. <laughs> that sweater, I'll make a matching hat and that won't count as one of my three sets, but okay. Another one is to finish our frog five projects. I went through looking for movie knitting the other day and I pulled three projects that it's like frog, just frog. So I'm already like, I need to do it, which is part of that, you know, like, <laughs> so finish a frog, knit a color work accessory. I love color work. It's one of those things that I forget how much I love it until I'm doing it. And then when I get into it, it's so I would like to knit 20 skeins from Stash pre-2020. So that doesn't seem hard to me. Just keep working with what I already have. And having this new yarn wall has definitely inspired me. I've already gone shopping off it for one of the projects I'm going to show you today. So, and it's not even done. Um, I tried to knit 10 hats last year. I'm going to try for it again this year. And of those 10, three should be for my bald seed. My very cute bald Steve. Oh, Aphrodite came in and then she left. Aphrodite is, she's running all the way upstairs. She's um, our Devon Rooks cat. So um, I'm going to use five library patterns. I'm really good at buying single patterns. <laughs> really good at it. Not so good at using them. Um, I'm going to, this is going to be a, a challenge for me. Knit a sweater in a month. So Nano Suima Do. I have it written wrong on my paper, but I've always liked that idea. I know it's in November when people try to accomplish that. I 
will let myself do it any month, but I would like to knit a sweater in a month. I think that would be a nice achievement for me because you see these people that post, you know, their year in review and it's like, they knit 12 sweaters. Color work, stranded sweaters. Like, oh, I'll be hard pressed to knit three. That's just not my interest. But I have a lot of sweater quantities and I do want to knit sweaters, but I like small projects. And the Desert Vista and the other knit alongs I participate in really reward for smaller projects more than a big giant sweater. So I want to do that. Um, let's see, last year I didn't knit a pair of slippers. I have a half knitted pair for my dad that I really should finish. I wanted to for Christmas, but I didn't get it. So I'm gonna do try for that again this year. And just uh, last year I tried to get 50 hexes into my hexagon blanket. Um, I got seven and 25, 32 in. So this year I'm going to do the fiber nymph. So that'll be 20 and then another 25 hexes in. That's its own item. And then I have to knit five dishcloths. I didn't do that last year. So I'm gonna try and do that. And then, oh, here's the best one. Ready? I'm, yeah. So I made this spreadsheet. Well, I pulled my stash. See my geekiness? <laughs> I pulled my stash out of uh, Ravelry. You can download an Excel file that lists everything. And then I made a pivot table of the yarn names and brands. I put them together, I pivoted to, so I could see what yarns I owned the most of. And then I sorted them. So, you know, here are the top yarns that you own. And then I went through and said, okay, what do I own a lot of that I've never knit with? And that's what this list is that I came up with. So I have Elena uh, Fingering Wool, which was, she's a indie dyer in Paris that I ordered a sweater's worth of her yarn and I haven't knit it. And I have, this one doesn't say, the yardage, but it's close to 2,000 yards. So I would like to get that one done. Um, I ordered Serendipity yarn from Fibronet Dye Works. I ordered a sweater kit from her. So that's a huge amount of yarn that I have 1,300 yards that I've never knit with. I don't know how that yarn is. So I'd like to give that a shot. Uh, Briar Rose, 4th of July. I've bought two sweaters worth of that at Rhinebeck. So that would kind of be two birds with one stone and I have 2,200 of that. Um, Classic Elite Soft Linen, I bought three sweaters worth and I have, it was going out, it was discontinued at my LYS and I bought three sweaters worth because I they had a um, Classic Elite yarn a booklet thing with gorgeous patterns in it. I wanted them all and I got about halfway through one and then lost interest because linen's tough and it's warm in the summer. So anyways, that is one of my top three to knit. So the Alana, the French yarn, the uh, Classic Elite Soft Linen, and what's the third one? I, when I was in London for work, I went to, I think it was called Loop, I don't remember the name of it. I went to a yarn shop and bought a sweater's worth of DK weight wool mice and I've not knit it. It's a gorgeous burgundy color. So um, that is, let me just, uh, looking, 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 uh, 1400 yards. So that's definitely a nice sweater for me. Now in my head, all I wanna knit are color work sweaters, which the French yarn, the Alana yarn could be color work. I have the main teal color, which is similar to this, cause that's my, that's my jam as Silly Fur would say. And, um, I have two contrast, not contrast, but speckled, there we go, <laughs> speckled colorways that are different, single skeins that both coordinate with the teal color. So I could use one of those and do the yoke. I really want to knit a garden gate. That is number one on my list of things to knit for 2020. So that's all my future knitting thoughts for 2020. In the meantime, I am... Yarn wall. Okay, let's talk about the yarn wall. I'm trying to, trying to stay on close to a, to an order here. Okay, um, Steve records for Libra, LibraVox, and here's one of his microphones. He has a couple. I don't know. He got one for Christmas. He's got this box. I, I don't know. He's getting very into it. <laughs> very professional. Um, but he 
wanted some sound deadening. He wanted a studio and we don't really have space or money for that right now. So his solution at Rhinebeck was he saw the yarn on display and he said, Steph, what if we do a cake wall? Not Hanks, but cakes so that there's no space between. So we spent six hours one day putting together this goes from what chair height to the ceiling with yarn in a color gradient on this side. This is only fingering weight yarn from uh, all kinds of dyers, different people. And I've already gone shopping off of it because I pulled one of these. So, um, and then this side, the plan is for it to be, I, but we ran out, sorry, we ran out. So I have to cake up some more green yarns. This side is specific dyers. Like this is my Desert Vista. This is my sun soaked yarns. This is Fiber Nymph up and around. Opal's at the top. I'm gonna get Knit Picks and Croy on there because I have a pretty big space to fill and um, I really wanted it to be specific dyers on this side. So I still have some fingering weight yarn in bins in the closet, but I, we've cleaned out two bins. It's gonna be three, maybe four, uh, depending on how much we can get up here. We're still in the process of skeining, but I did get a new skeiner for Christmas, so that was awesome. And a tabletop yarn swift, which Steve does not like. He thinks it's crazy and it jumps. I think it's wonderful, and I'm never using the Umbrella Swift again, but he likes the Umbrella Swift, so we'll keep both. He has strong opinions for someone who does not knit. <laughs> So that's what's going on behind me. Um, I posted some pictures of it and got a couple comments about, are you worried about your yarn? I am a little worried about, um, I'm very little worried. Like I'm aware that there could be a moth problem or there could be a dusty situation in which I'm allergic to everything. So I would be a sneezy mess knitting with these yarns. Um, Sorry, that's the same yarn as the baby sweater that I might send to Frau. So that would be good for the hat. <laughs> see, it's nice to have it out where I can see it. I've always had my yarn in bins, either in the garage, bins in a closet, bins, bins, bins. Like, hello, I can see you. So we've never had an issue with moths. I have lavender sachets, whatever, shoved in there. Um, I keep cedar around. I just... We're risking it. We've discussed the cost of our art installation yarn wall. And so Steve is also aware of how much yarn we are potentially endangering. And it's a decision we've made together that, yep, we that's okay. So we'll see, here we go. And if it doesn't go well, I can all take it. I can always take it down and put it back in bins. Now knitting with caked yarn, these are all caked really loosely. So I know it's not great for yarn to be caked, but it doesn't bother me to knit with caked yarn. I'm using one that's been caked for 10 years and it's perfectly fine. We'll see after I wash and block the garment uh, how it is, but that's the yarn wall. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is completely crazy? It's a double function wall, right? For his recording and for me. And I sit right across from this wall right there when I'm working in the shop. And so just looking up at my yarn gives me so much happiness already after I think it's been up for maybe five days. So that's the yarn wall. And I might start recording in here just because it is so fun once it's finished. I mean, I'm sorry it's not finished today, but it will be soon. So that's enough talk about everything else. <laughs> Let's talk about knitting. Um, so I mentioned that I am a bit sock crazed and I am. Let's start with the finished object. So I finished my December Desert Vista Dye Works socks. These are the Stranger Things colorway knit on size zeros. Um, I do a two by two rib toe up uh, with Wendy Johnson's slip stitch gusseted heel. That's my favorite heel. It's my best vanilla sock. And these are a gift and they're done. Yay! So this year I'm going to try to um, knit for other people more with the Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, at Christmas, my mom was holding up her her Christmas socks from a couple years ago I posted on Instagram. So you may have already heard this, but she put her feet up on, the, on her recliner and pointed them at me and both heels, 
great big holes. And I just darned. Um, heel in her Baudelaire's which I'm knitting her another pair to replace them but she doesn't want them replaced she just wants her knit picks green Baudelaire's back so I put a heel on it but I hated doing it like trying to weave it and make it not bumpy and she's happy with the end result but I'm not so I didn't want to darn her socks and I sat there thinking well I could cut and I don't have any more of that. It was Knit Picks Felici. I want to say it was like Jingle yarn. Um, I think they're six or seven years old. They're old socks and she wears them all the time year round. So yeah, I'm going to try knitting other people more socks. <laughs> That's the moral of that story. So these are done. Last time I showed you this sock and his mate is in one of these many 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 sock bags not that one so having all of this inspiration from the yarn wall behind me is a good and a bad thing right like do i cast everything on do i go crazy and follow the urges where they lead me or do i try and stay disciplined so a little bit of discipline i worked on oh i worked on these while we watched Prisoner of Azkaban, which is my favorite Harry Potter movie. I'm really sorry about what she said. And I, uh, I agree with the net girls, no more money going forward, but I'm not going to stop watching and enjoying and loving the books and the audiobooks that I already have in the movies. So, um, I'm sorry. And I feel your pain if her comments hurt any of you, but JK Rowling. I'm speaking of but we did enjoy the movie and I worked a little bit on these so just a little cable these were a relay project that surprised me and I knit a sock this sock in five six six days so then I was burnt out on that color so I didn't want to knit anymore so just the little toe but I did have my little Harry Potter <laughs> I was excited to have that and I am writing it in this bag I have two Fat squirrel bags. I think they were probably my first ones ever. And these are like January, February bags. Do you do that with your bags? Like every year these come out at this time of year and I put my projects in them because I think that's when I got them and that's when they should be used. You know, cardinals, winter snow. So they are wrinkly and well worn and well loved, but that's what I'm using for a project bag there. Um, I mentioned mom's Baudelaire socks which I really should finish. She was asking me about them. I pulled them out. They are, I haven't really done anything on them. Oh, both of these socks are knit with opal because I like opal. I like opal about 50 skeins worth of I like opal. <laughs> so, um, and I bought three skeins of, four skeins of solid color opal to knit these Baudelaire's for mom and her friend Kathy and I gifted Kathy hers but mom's is languishing and maybe if I have it out I will want to knit it more Baudelaire is a cookie a pattern it is a beautiful lace detail I believe the patterns cuff down but I do it toe up and it's just a lovely delicate pattern um I have lots of stitch markers to help me remember to make it easier so I can just zip right through it. So I've turned the heel on this one and it was clearly during the start of the pigskin party because I've got my little ghosty on here. Um, yeah. I just need to do a little bit more because she doesn't like her socks really tall and she really needs socks. <laughs> I mean, she's got store-bought socks, but... When someone really loves what you make them and they make all kinds of things for you, it makes you really want to make something back for them. So that's one sock. Or is that two? That's two socks. Okay, next sock. I purchased some World of Yarn yarn to try. And this is called Antarctica. I think I purchased six skeins super inexpensive yarn like 13 14 dollar range for a pair of socks self-striping pretty good colors so i gave it a go 
<laughs> placed an order. I bought a sweater's worth as well and uh, jumped in on these socks. So they had been sitting in the to be cataloged, to be added into Ravelry pile. And when I sat there entering yarn for one day, an entire day, not an entire day, but anyways, till 2 p.m. <laughs> entering yarn, um, it really made me want to knit them. So I am trying these out. I don't know how this yarn will wear. Happy New Year and welcome to the first update of 2020. It actually happened a little before, but here's what's new in the shop. So we've got some dinosaurs, some Harry Potter, some mini mouse themed things, uh, snowy mittens and warm hot cocoa. Hermione Granger, one of our favorites. This is a set with the gold. How about this broom? I know, it's a little weird that it has a stand, but it goes perfectly with our golden snitch in this cute set. Disney, Minnie Mouse, we love it. So here's one in blue, and then this is my absolute favorite. Look at that castle, it's adorable! I can't, I can't love it enough. <laughs> we reworked the red mittens and snow for that set and we've added a more intricate snowflake design to the hot cocoa set. This stegosaurus is the cutest thing I think I've ever seen. Oh, so cute. And a nice new dark purple teapot. So that's it. We are offering free shipping on orders over $15. That's easy. Two sets. You got it. All right. Thanks for stopping by and checking us out. And happy new year. Okay. The furnace guy came and was here for way longer than I wanted. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, 20 minutes would have been the right amount of time. And instead he was here for three and a half hours. But the furnace is working great now, I'm told. So I did lose, it's hot in the afternoon. The sun shines into this room and it, it's, it's like a little greenhouse. So let's get back to talking about all of the socks. Okay, so I was showing you that this skein was one that, it's new to me. I've never used this before. It's from World of Yarn, it's Antarctica. The color is color number six, if you're curious. Get out of the sun. I think that might mess up the view. So it's a uh, self-striping, reminiscent of a croy. Like it's a little thicker. It's it's a little more towards um, sport weight yarn, but I like it. It knit up really fast. I was using size zeros, as I often do. Toe up, same pattern. I just knit the same pattern over and over. But you know what? Part of my sock crazy right now, I think is in response to the chaos in my life of Steve and the boys home and Christmas and the prep. And it was just like, you know what? I want some easy mindless knitting. And so I just kept casting on socks. So that's pair number four. Pair number five, you ready? <laughs> All right. Um, this one, I forgot I cast this on. So in November, when I finished um, my sock, I grabbed a couple skeins, I think it was at Jolene's or Michael's, of their Manny Petty yarn. It's, let's see, Lion Brand Manny Petty. The colorway is Boot <laughs> 245. So it's a really nice um, purple blue color. I don't think that this is going to get a lot in green. <laughs> I don't think that this is going to get a lot of love right now, but just counting it. It's good theater knitting. So Dr. Doolittle, are you going to go see it? We saw a preview and I'm pumped to take the boys and my dad and probably my mom. I don't know if Steve will go. So that was six. I can't count. <laughs> It's beyond counting. There are so many socks. All right, here's the next pair. Nope, that's not a sock. Okay, here's the next pair that I'm working on. See, I told you, I'm like overflowing. I want to knit all the things. There's all of this inspiration coming from behind me, I swear. Or it's the new year. I don't know. New, new, new. So 
here is this one the first of my three Christmas socks so again just a oh my little house looks funny um, just a two by two rib I like it so there's that and that is a Regia which I know I swore I would never use Regia again but it's hard to find Christmas workhorse yarn so this is candy color uh, it's a four ply and from what I saw of this I think there were like eight different Christmas colors I bought two of them so you'll see them coming up and I am oh this one's a little more interesting I am doing the ribbing on the top of the foot but I'm going to give a try to uh, Tina Ku KUU to her spring ecstasy socks they're a toe-up construction and um, I like the way the heel works so we'll see how this goes with self striping and ribbing I think I can carry the ribs from make it look like the ribs are coming down the leg and go further into the heel if that makes sense because you know that triangle on the side the way she does it I think I can keep ribbing into that triangle so we'll see it's a little more exciting than my usual gotta try new things once in a while and then it is January so it was time for the new DVD color and I like I've I like you're mostly in the mood for a holiday um, the few days before it but these holidays that are at the beginning of the month make it hard for me so I decided to knit my Valentine's Day socks during January and I did the same thing with my Christmas socks I knit them in November even though that's a holiday at the end of the month but I think it's a it's a good practice to get in so that I can then wear the socks a couple times during the month when I'm feeling inspired by that holiday so here is Zombody Loves You. I think this was one of the first DVD self-striping skeins of yarn I bought because it is, I think I bought it because I thought the, uh, the, the name was cute, if I remember right, the Zombody instead of somebody. Uh, but now that I've become a little more aware of how um, Desert Rested Dye Works does her colors and all that, and I love her colors. No, no trashing on that, but I'm not a big fan of the zombie stripes, which are more of a, like, they kind of remind me of camouflage, like a little bit more marled with green and reds and whites and, and knowing that it's like zombie, it's kind of, it just kind of grosses me out. I know I'm such a baby. So I haven't knit this pair yet. And I thought it would be a good time to give it a shot. I do like the hot pink even though I'm not normally a pink girl, I think it looks really pretty there. So I'm going into the red and I don't know how many stripes it has or anything about it. So it'll be fun. And it is riding in a bag that Amy Loris made for me. So I love it. I love it. Little knot bag. Um, I also had those late surprise cast on fingerless mitts for my mother-in-law. Yeah, I finished in time. But let's see if you can spot the difference. This was the first one that you've seen. Sorry about the sun. And here's the second one. I thought I used the same size needles. I definitely used the same size cast on. Like my stitch counts were right. Okay, my stitch count was a little off on this one, but it was like one or two. I could fudge it every row, but apparently, no, these are very different mitts, and there was no way I was going to give someone two very different mitts. So I have enough yarn that's a Felici, um, where is it? It's this one. What's the name of it? I don't even know. Coffee Break. So I have the skein and a half left. So I'm going to knit two more <laughs> and um, I know what needles I used for this first one and they were not the same needles that I used for the second one. So um, I'm going to use different needles, right? Use the second one here and the first one here and hopefully I end up with a matching set. Uh, yeah, so I had mentioned that my friend with rather small hands had looked at this color and liked it and I didn't want to knit 
a second pair of these, but it's going to happen anyways. And since she's such a petite person, I think she'll be very happy to have these. So these are the pieces of eight mitts by, do I have who it's by somewhere? I don't, but there's that. And I have guessed on one more. I know. What? Why knit one of something when you could knit three? And I don't think I worked on it at all last week because it wasn't a pressing deadline. But it's almost to the point of, it's a free pattern. I'm not giving away anything. Of sewing that together and then moving on. So that's also in Felici and it is cloudy with a chance of rainbows, I believe. And see, this I did on size two. This... The smaller one I did on size threes which are new I got them from for Christmas from Steve they're kind of dull uh, what are they they're knit pro zings I want to say I don't know I like the color of course but they look kind of dull to me but it's fine they don't look it they are kind of dull they remind me of an Addy tip versus um, the carbons that I'm used to which are pretty pointed so these are what I will use to knit a second one of these. And then this was the same needle that I was using on the hexagon. So I need to go finish the hexam on and then finish this. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy, right? Thanks for sticking with me, guys. You know, there are a lot of podcasts you could watch. And I do really appreciate you joining me in my irregular schedule and uh, giving me encouragement and comments. And it's really nice. So thanks for being here. Um, I have one last thing in here, which is, it hasn't gotten any work, work on it, but it will. This is my whip interception project. So, uh, which is the resistance shawl. And I think that's it. My table is clear. Everything seems to be on the floor except this. Oh no, one last thing. I have baby sets to knit. And this yarn I bought at Rhineback. It is... Uh, socks that rock medium weight in I don't know the name of the color it's a pretty like snot green with bright teal and blue and red in it and it's glorious I bought two skeins of it it was right here see that's, that's his brother um, and I bought it at Rhinebeck 2010 I knew let me think about this I knew I was gonna get pregnant I wasn't pregnant yet um, and I bought this thinking about making it for uh, my soon-to-be baby making a baby sweater out of it and I never did right and so I'm going to make it 10 years later into a baby sweater for a friend so here is what I have so far and this color could not be more beautiful I just love how it's knitting up and the variegation of it it's pretty cool I learned a long time time ago that I don't like the hundred percent merino of socks that rock on my feet. I don't like the way it pulls and then I wear through it really fast. So I don't use any of my socks that rock for socks. So it's nice to have a good pattern, good choice to use it on instead. And this is the vertebrae pattern by Kelly Van Nykirk. <laughs> I'll link it or I'll, I'll put, spell her name out below. And I think I'm using size threes or fours. I don't know. It's a surprise. We'll see. No, I think it's fours. I can picture my little uh, Addy needle gauger. <laughs> it's, on the, it's the first one, so that's a four. Uh, yeah. So here it is. This is my only non-sock project that's gotten any work this week. <laughs> ah, and I have my Mandalorian on it. We got the boys a switch. Actually, my in-laws got it. I... It was my idea, but they did the purchasing. A Nintendo Switch, right? And they have just been loving Mario Kart. And I also got them Luigi's Mansion, thinking it might be like Super Nintendo 3, Super Mario Brothers for Super Nintendo 3, which is what I played when I was, I think, 9 or 10 is, when, is what I... Oh, no! I looked it up. It was 92, wasn't it? Anyways, so... The boys have been playing that like crazy and it was recommended. <laughs> Melody recommended that we get the online subscription, which is only 20 bucks a year. And it gives you access to the old uh, 
games so like super mario brothers so we're gonna do it we decided i know it's such a big purchase <laughs> but doing that also has us discussing okay but what about disney plus and i am really not a fan of subscription services like and it's either more i'm think of it more like if I'm going to pay for cable, what I watch for TV shows should be on cable. And if I'm going to pay for Netflix, you know, so we have cable. I'm not a fan of cable. If I could, I would like a la carte it and pick all my channels and that's all I would get. But I like football and I like HBO and Steve likes soccer. So, and well, the boys do too. So we've got cable that's not going anywhere and we have Netflix and Prime and I'm not giving up my Prime but I if we want to do the Disney thing we have to let something go and Steve was adamant that we not let Netflix go so I don't know how it's going to happen but I really want to watch The Mandalorian <laughs> so I may cave and we may sign up for Disney Plus for a month and then Put it on hold or something so we'll see about that but Christmas was really good for us uh, we go to my parents and we did that and had a great time and um, it's so funny we, there are six of us it's, I don't I'm an only child and it's my parents and my husband and our, my two kids our two kids and we cook for an army so we cook the first two days and then or the first day in the morning of the next morning I made fruit pizza it was still and then it's like why are we cooking any more food because mom and I make meal plans and all this stuff about food we're gonna eat and what we're gonna do and Steve was wisely said let's just eat leftovers and we were at least three days home and we were still eating leftovers because we had cooked so much it was crazy but it was a good time and the boys had so much fun. Roland got um, the full 2019 Tops card set. So that that he got that from my parents with a nice binder, and he was super excited to have that. And um, an aunt and uncle gave him a Mookie Betts figure, like a Funko Pop thing. And another aunt and uncle got him a near mint condition Mookie Betts rookie card in case you can't tell Mookie Betts is his favorite player we live in New Hampshire we have to like Boston so um he was very baseball and books lots and lots of books like I looked at the because we put away Christmas last night or yesterday a day and the pile of books <laughs> it, he probably between the two of them they probably got 25 new books which is awesome but it, it made it a little hard for playing, you know, like, I don't know. The, the, we got board games and we played a lot of board games for sure. The um, four of us during the week that everybody was home. And even last night we played this game Dragonwood that Steve wanted. It's like a kid's version of Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. I don't know, but it was super fun and we all loved it. And even though Tristan is five, he can definitely understand what's going on. Like he could play the game technically, but he couldn't strategize and win, if that makes sense. So uh, Ro is eight and he was good strategizing and like, yeah. So we had fun. We played as teams the first time just to be sure the boys could do it. And Ro and I beat Steve and Tris. And then the second time Ro played by himself, I played by myself. And then Steve and Tristan played as a team and they beat us. They beat me bad. I was way behind. So who knows? <laughs> Maybe my chess boy would be me <laughs> if he and I played by ourselves. So um, yeah, board games, but that involves parent interaction, you know, and Tristan got um, this cool Hot Wheel thing, but I've got to mount it on the wall and we haven't done that yet. And um, it's a track. It's like a four foot long track and it whips them out and they go way far. And um, we got this was like a crazy purchase. Let me think for a second. Yes, I bought it from Zulily. I bought these two um, like it, they're like little cars that you turn the wheel and it makes the car move. It's like, um, you don't have to do it. You don't pedal, you don't do anything and you can get it going really fast. You can back it up. You can do all this cool stuff. One of Tristan's friends had it 
and we really liked it thought it was cool so I got him each one. Oh my gosh I they arrived and the box said three plus and I was so worried that they would not like them <laughs> that they were too old for those kind of things you know you think about I don't know what they're called but those like trikes that you would pedal around is kind of like that kind of car except you don't pedal it's all about the steering and the mechanics of it and figuring out how to go forward and backwards where you want so that was Christmas Day the the gift of choice like the two of them were just racing around my parents have a pretty big kitchen and they were just going around and around in there and having a good old time so I, I even pulled Roland aside after they opened them and I was like, honey, I know this is kind of young for you, but I knew if Tristan got one, you'd want one too. And so I got two, you know, kind of like a, I don't think you're a three year old, don't worry about it. But he loved it and he thought it was great. So they've been having fun with those. They've been sledding. We got lots of snow. Um, what else was I gonna say? Roland got glasses. I know. I know. It's crazy. He looks so old. And he looks so much like his father. That's even more crazy. Steve was 16? 15. 16. 15 when I met him. Uh, 17 when we started dating. And it's just like Roland's 8 and he looks like he's 21. And he's just these big chunky blue Oakleys that are so stylish and he's got his little like comb over soccer guy haircut and oh my god he's not a baby he's growing so fast but you wouldn't know it because he's still super affectionate and chases me around mama 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 hugs so I'm taking the hugs and even though I like my personal space I am <laughs> tolerating the hugs I am giving him all the love he is requiring because soon he's gonna be a smelly teenager who wants nothing to do with me so <sighs> that's it I think I think I've filled you in Tristan do I have any funny things to say about Tristan no he's just such a goof you know we got that switch right the Nintendo Switch and Roland is an early riser anyways and it's Christmas break and so they're staying up a little later and then Ro is so excited that he's not like I encourage him to roll over and go back to sleep but he never does and so he's been getting up at five after going to bed between nine and ten going to sleep they go to bed at like 8 30 they had they did this week but definitely not enough sleep and because he was so excited he kept waking his brother up <laughs> to come play with the switch with him so for five days Tristan got very not enough sleep so, <laughs> so I'm sure today was a little rough for him getting back to school and the routine but they did both sleep in this morning because they have to go to school you know how that is <laughs> So we were getting them up at seven o'clock. Like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. But yeah, so we are all good here. I hope you are all good there and you've stuck with me through this long rambly episode. Um, I look forward to podcasting again soon and sharing my finished walls with you. So have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Take care. Bye. Bye. I just realized I think I forgot to tell you guys who won the hashtag adorn it uh, $10 gift certificate for December. So I'm going to tell you now that we had 62 entries and the winner was number six who is Kate Jones 982. She uh, won for one of our green project bags. So um, and she knit a pair of holiday socks in the bag or with the bag. So get in touch with me and I will uh, PM me on Ravelry and I'll send you over a gift certificate. Okay, thanks.